see one of the biggest problems with journalism today being that journalists have lost their connection with the public. We don't have a good handle on what matters to people, what are the issues that are most relevant to them, and we don't really have connections into the incredibly diverse set of communities that we're expected to represent. So about five years ago, the president of American Public Media, Bill Kling, presented the idea that there's so much information in the audience that we have. If we can get that information into our newsroom, we can do smarter, deeper reporting, better news coverage. So I was hired, along with Andrew Haig, our senior producer who's here, to figure out how to tap the knowledge of the audience, bring it into the newsroom, and integrate it into our editorial process so that we could actually do smarter reporting on issues that really mattered to the people that we were trying to serve. We took the newsroom, which has about 25 reporters, six or seven editors, and we, we built this network of citizen sources in Minnesota to see if it would work, if we could actually engage people, bring them into the news gathering process and get information from them that, that could make our journalism smarter. What we initially decided to do was to try to invite people to become part of a network of folks that would share their knowledge to make us smarter about the news. And we kind of sketched out a very simple um, system where we'd have a database where we would collect information that people gave us voluntarily about themselves so we could track what their expertise was in different areas based on their training, their jobs, their own social networks, their passions. And then um, as we got more information about them, we'd be able to find people in this network who might know about a story we were doing, say um, new ways to, um, to privately fund public education. We did a series called Beyond Bake Sales, where we talked about how increasingly public schools were actually asking parents to donate resources directly to do everything from buy school supplies for the classes to actually pay for more teachers or for an art teacher. And so as part of that series, we sent out a note to people in our network that we knew had kids in public school age, uh, of public school age. And we invited them to tell us about anything they knew about how their public schools were trying to cope with lower funds and actually raise money using children to sell things or using parents to create endowments for public schools. Got a ton of information and did a series based on that. We do it in a variety of ways. Um, sometimes we'll go on the air and say, if you know something about new ways that schools are trying to raise money to support education, come to our website and click on the schoolhouse. And when they click on the schoolhouse, they get our query asking them for their experience and their knowledge about what schools are doing in an innovative way to try to actually raise money for everything from salaries to school supplies. Um, we also, though, now have a network of people, about 21,000 in the upper Midwest, and our national network is 47,000 people. So increasingly, we go into our database, we look for people that have told us they have kids in public schools, or that they have kids that are, you know, K through 12, and we'll, send, we'll, we'll select a group of them, 500 or so. Sometimes we'll vary it across different geographies. Um, we have ages on people, we have zip codes, so we can actually kind of create a, a a sample that, that represents a lot of diverse communities and we'll send out a note to them saying if you have knowledge about this click here it moves to an online form we ask three or four open-ended questions that goes into our database at, at American Public Media and then we have specialized journalists called Public Insight Analysts who read every response look for themes look for incredible sources or bits of information that we didn't know didn't have put those in reports and hand them off to the reporter doing the story What we did from the start, which was a good guess and, and turned out to be very smart, is we decided to create tools that were scalable, where we could have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the network, but we could manage them using these knowledge management tools we created so that only a few people, public insight analysts, could actually handle all the information coming in. When we have a request, we don't go to the whole network. We go to five or 600 people that we think, based on the information they've shared about themselves, are li most likely to have knowledge on the topic. So one of the ways we manage the flow is to only go out to five or 600 people at a time. If we don't get what we want, we go out to another five or 600 people 
who, based on what we know about them, are likely to have knowledge. I think what we've tried to do is really take the whole notion of sourcing and bring to bear technology so that a reporter, instead of consulting 10 sources on a story and having a Rolodex of 300 people, now can consult several hundred people on a story through the technology and can have a virtual Rolodex of tens of thousands of people. And we kind of centrally manage the relationships and the information about those people so that we can help reporters find just the right people to get information from. More importantly, I'm, I'm finding people who are doing incredible things um, around this whole area of how to make journalism smarter through computation. And just saw a panel on how to visualize data. One of the things I'd like to do is actually take information and pitch it out to our audience and say, look through this data. You find the stories and tell us what we should be covering. And so I'm excited about some of the efforts around that area. I'm also really interested in how to take the network that we've formed and find new ways to let them engage with each other, still doing it privately and confidentially, because we, we, we treat all the people in our network as sources and we protect their confidentiality, but allowing them to actually work together to help us find new trends, find stories, and, and really figure out what's going on on a community by community level in the area that we serve, which is all of Minnesota and the surrounding states for Minnesota Public Radio, and then the whole nation and the world for Marketplace, for Weekend America, Speaking of Faith, our national programs. So it's all shareable. It's all shareable.